Yeah, okay, good. So yeah, I'll be talking about some discrete optimization problems under uncertainty. Uh, let's start off with an example, uh, if it works, yeah. Okay. So suppose you own a very big diamond, <laughs> okay, and you want to sell it out. So there are n potential buyers. Each of them has some value, vi. I mean, this value could, may or may not be known to you, so that's going to be kind of the goal of the talk. And your goal is to sell this diamond to somebody who has the highest value and basically charge them that much money. So your goal is to maximize revenue. And okay, how do you do it? That's the high level thing. And of course, I mean, I could have replaced by selling this diamond by like maybe selling a house, ad slots on a web, <laughs> which again, finding some employee or like a marriage partner. But okay, like for the talk, I'll focus on these like toy problems, <laughs> but, uh, or like very serious problems. But uh, yeah, they, these models can be generalized and they do have some applications, but let's focus just on like on these simple examples, toy problems, can we hope to prove any theoretical guarantees? And as you might see, like already this problem, if I know all the values up front, this is super easy. I'll basically just go to the buyer who has the highest value and maximize my value. And the question is, okay, what if there's some uncertainty? So I don't know, like maybe a buyer who comes tomorrow, how much money they're going to offer me. So how do I go about it? So yeah, currently what does uncertainty mean? The meaning is also very uncertain, but yeah, we'll make it clear. Okay, let's start off with what's discrete optimization. So this is like when there's no uncertainty. The usual setting is there's a finite universe. So imagine like n, which is say the number of your buyers. There's an objective function, which could be say the sum of your values, like some linear function, but in general it's like a function from a subset to any non-negative reals. You have a constraint, maybe like uh, at most one buyer you can select, or maybe at most the number of diamonds that you have you can sell. And you want to usually, the goal is to design a polytime algorithm, polynomial usually in n, uh, to maximize or minimize your function. And this is a very, like vast field, there are like many, many problems. So I don't expect you to go over these problems, but like there are many maximization and minimization problems. There are several books in this area. And uh, so I'm not saying that discrete optimization is easy. It's already pretty hard, but at least today, I mean, by now we have a decent understanding of how to, we have many tools how to solve discrete optimization problems. The focus today is like, what if there's some kind of uncertainty to solve these discrete optimization problems? And in particular, I'll focus on like very simple discrete optimization problems. Like for example, selling a single diamond, which is trivial in the case where you know all the Okay, and how to model uncertainty. So let's even say like, okay, uh, let's first, why do I care about uncertainty? Like usual reasons are like, okay, I mean, maybe finding the exact values is difficult. You need to conduct surveys to find out the values of the buyers. There could be some game theoretic challenges, like uh, it's a private information of the buyer. Uh, you don't, I mean, you cannot extract the value. So, but today's talk, I'll focus on two broad approaches, which is, one is the so-called area of stochastic optimization. And here, what I mean is, I'll basically assume that there could be some uncertain parameters, but you always have distributions on their values. So you don't know the outcomes from these distributions, but there is some underlying distribution. So each buyer is drawing value from some known distribution. Known, unknown, I mean, you can talk about all cost models, but let's assume like, yeah, known distributions. And here, because the distributions are known, in some sense, designing the optimal algorithm, if you don't care about running time, is easy, because you can kind of like brute force over everything. But the major bottleneck is computation. The other uh, area, broad approach, is online decision making, where you don't know these parameters. Like, there are some parameters for which you don't even know like any distributions. You might know maybe they have some range, they are like non-negative numbers or something, but they might take like very uh, adversarial values. So here, I mean, even information could be a challenge, and of course, you still care about computation. But okay, let's try to make it a little more rigorous. So okay, I like the next five minutes, I'll basically talk about like this diamond selling problem in some stochastic optimization setting, and then we'll talk about the same problem in an online world. Any questions? Yeah, okay, good. So okay, what do I mean by diamond selling in the stochastic setting? So again, you have these bunch of buyers. Let's assume I know distributions. These are independent distributions on their values. So buyer i, and for simplicity, I'll also assume these distributions are Bernoulli, which means like buyer i, either they like your diamond and they're going to pay you like vi. So these vi's are known upfront and you also know pi's, like with probability pi, they're going to like your diamond and they're going to give you vi. They'll be willing to give you vi, otherwise they don't like it and they'll be giving you like value zero. So this is just for simplicity, but like let's just work with Bernoulli distributions. And the constraint is that, okay, you cannot find out buyer values of all the buyers, all the potential buyers you can only find out values of k of them. So for concreteness, imagine you have like 100 buyers in the market. 
you have a budget constraint, like you can only find out values of 10 of them. So you, out of 100 buyers, you find out values of 10 of them. Amongst the 10 you find, you'll sell it to the one who has the highest value. So, and the main point is you can select these 10 buyers adaptively. So you go to the first buyer, depending on how they behave, you may choose, okay, who's going to be my next buyer, and then the third buyer. So you can also think of this as a decision tree of height the same as your budget, K. So you first go to buyer one, depending on whether they like or don't like it, you may go to like buyer five or a buyer two and so on. So it's some kind of a decision tree. So again, like if computation is not a bottleneck, you can kind of brute force and find out this thing. But the issue is, as you see, like the height of this tree or like the size of the tree is already becoming exponential in K. So in general, finding this optimal decision tree becomes computationally infeasible. So we want to, I mean, what we care about is, I mean, a polynomial time algorithm. Maybe my guarantees are approximate. So I'm not getting maybe the optimal decision tree's expected value. I'm getting some other algorithm, which runs efficiently, but maybe it loses something in the performance. Good. And we'll focus on a special class of algorithms, which are the so-called non-adaptive algorithms, which are again natural. So it's an algorithm which fixes the set of buyers I'm going to visit upfront. So right in the beginning, I decide, okay, these are the 10 buyers I'm going to go and visit irrespective of how their values are behaving. So you go, to, like, I mean, here's the fixed set, and amongst them, you'll get the highest value. The benefits, of course, are, okay, first of all, this is very easy to represent. I just need to give you a set of size k, rather than giving you this entire decision tree, which could be exponential in size. So I'm just saying, okay, give me the set of size at most k. And often, they are also very easy to find. So, I mean, for example, this function turns out to be like submodular. So we know simple, like from that long list of discrete optimization problems, we know some standard ways of solving this and optimizing this. So this we know how to solve. Uh, the major worry, of course, is that, okay, now I've limited my algorithms to a subclass, and I might be losing a lot in my performance. So the optimal adaptive trees might be giving you a lot more value as compared to the optimal non-adaptive algorithm. So this adaptivity gap could be large. And the question is, how large can this gap get? So somebody who's being adaptive versus somebody who's being naive and just deciding upfront. Okay, and again, like uh, you can think of this diagram again. So there was some optimal decision tree, like the optimal adaptive algorithm. You wanted to design an algorithm which was this optimal adaptive algorithm, but rather than designing it directly, you first argue about this adaptivity gap and then design an algorithm which is comparable to the optimal non-adaptive algorithm. So uh, for this setting, like. So what some results that I have, like with the, so Anupam Gupta, Vishwanath Nagarajan, and like uh, Domagoy Bradech and Goran Jujik. So like we gradually improved the constraints, but now what we know is, like the right answers are, so for any submodular function, basically this max or expected max, these are also submodular functions. These are functions which satisfy decreasing marginal properties. It's a pretty large class. And for very complicated constraints, like any downward close constraints, so not just like going, selecting going to up to like at most k buyers, but uh, downward close basically means if a set is feasible, then also a subset is also going to be feasible. So for such a large class, the adaptivity gap is at most two, and there exist instances in which the gap can also become two. So basically we kind of understand exactly how large the adaptivity gap can get. And uh, one open question in this field is like, what if I make my class even larger? So from submodular to subadditive functions, so here we know like the adaptivity gap cannot be a constant, but can it be polylogin? So this we don't know. So it's an open question. Nice question to think about. Yeah. What's? Uh, I guess intuitively you can say. I mean, I can. I mean, okay, it's coming from the proof, but like I mean, intuitively. <laughs> Yeah, the intuition is somehow, okay, the function, the submodular functions, they behave some kind of concave functions. So although the adaptive algorithm has some power, you can easily construct very simple examples where the gap is definitely greater than one. But in general, you can construct examples where like, at most the difference between the two is like, kind of the adaptive algorithm is getting two trials versus you are getting only a single trial. I mean, yeah, I don't have a better intuition to get. Okay, good. Uh, so now let me briefly talk about the online decision making, again, like this other model where you don't have priors. And I want to talk about something called competitive ratios to measure the performance of your algorithm. Uh, so again, okay, you have this diamond that you want to sell. Now imagine a setting where you don't know the values of these buyers. 
So these are only like non-negative real numbers. But these values are being revealed to you one by one, gradually. So suppose like you have a time horizon from t equals zero to one. At each time step, one of the buyers arrive. They tell you their value. And these buyers are arriving in a uniformly random order because they choose like an arrival time uniformly from zero to one independently. And as soon as they arrive, they reveal you their values. Uh, and you have to decide, okay, are you taking them or not? If you sell them the diamond, your diamond goes, you get the value and kind of the game ends. If you reject them, then the buyer goes forever. And your goal is of course to again maximize the expected value. Now the question is, okay, how would I, this, like what's the metric, like, or like in what sense, how, how am I designing the performance of my algorithm? Comparing, like, so it's competitive ratio where once you fix an algorithm, an adversary is going to decide the worst possible settings of these values. And for these worst possible settings of these values, what's the ratio of the maximum value versus what your algorithm gets? So in general, this competitive ratio is of course greater than or equal to one, but I mean, yeah. So the algorithm is trying to design something where the competitive ratio is very close to one, as close as possible to one. Okay. And now the point I was making is that, okay, even if I give you exponential time, it's unclear how you're going to like design this optimal algorithm. So in some sense, this is already a challenge. But ideally, we want even a polynomial time algorithm, which has competitive ratios as close to, pos to one as possible. And okay, so this problem that I mentioned, like the diamond selling in this model, is classically known as the secretary problem. It was already studied by Dinkin and all, like in the 60s. And it's known that the competitive ratio is E. Here's a very simple argument why it's at most four. Like, uh, imagine this time horizon. Just ignore all your buyers that arrive in the first half and accept the first buyer, which arrives in the second half, which is larger than the entire prefix. And the reason it works is because with half probability, the buyer with the lar largest value is going to arrive in the second half, and the buyer with the second highest value is going to arrive in the first half. So if you condition on both events, which happens with a quarter probability, you'll definitely get like the highest buyer. But I mean, you can be a little more careful, put this threshold rather than at half, put it at one over E, and do like a careful calculation, then you can show the competitive ratio is actually E. Uh, now I can ask you like more general versions of these problems. Like what if I'm selecting like rather than selling one diamond, I'm selling R diamonds. So these are all identical diamonds, say. So your goal is to maximize the sum of the values of the buyers, R values. And what's known here is actually this competitive ratio goes to one pretty much like and it scales down as like one over root R for this dependency. Uh, I mean, yeah. So this was shown by Kleinberg. Uh, and one important open question in this field is uh, the so-called matroid secretary problem. So I'm not going to define what a matroid is, but it's again like some kind of constraints on these buyers. The point is, uh, uh, the reason it's interesting is because the discrete optimization world, these are like very easy to solve. So running like a very simple greedy algorithm is already gives you the optimal algorithm. So the discrete optimization, if you know all the values up front, again, these are trivial to solve. The question is, can you design a constant approximation, competitive ratio algorithm for this, uh, for this matroid secretary problem? We use the subset of buyers you select, like have to form an independent set in your matroid. So we know the answers is like log log r. Under like many special classes of matroids, we know constants. I have also done some work, but like the main question is still open. Like, can we get a constant here? And good. So just to wrap up, like. So like we talk about the stochastic and online decision making. So again, I'm saying like these are very large areas. I'm just talking about like one, one aspects, like one, one ideas here. Adaptivity gaps, competitive ratio, computation versus information and computation. Uh, some open questions on like subarity functions and matroid secretary. Thank you.